a shaper. Bro, visit us on us.com. My next guest used the things that he puts in his products to protect America downrange, and now he's helping us, well, anybody that needs to breach a bottle. Eli Crane, owner of Bottle Breacher, welcome to Radio for Small Business. Thanks for having me. Great to be on. Now, tell us a little bit about your background, because I use words like downrange and defend us, so you got to tell everybody what you're all about. I uh, joined the Navy the week after 9-11 and um, spent 13 years in the Navy, the last nine years in the Navy as a SEAL. I don't have a fancy business degree or anything like that, and, you know, fortunately, I learned enough in the military that has really applied to business to where we've been able to be successful. So I consider myself really fortunate for that. So obviously, you know, we see all the documentaries, we see the movies about U.S. Navy SEALs and things like that. What percentage or how much of that training actually, you know, bred you to make sure you were going to be successful in business as well? A ton of it did. I mean, the first things first is they teach you accountability there. A lot of us think that we're grown up and mature, and then you get into a pressure cooker like SEAL training and you realize that, you know, I'm really not as mature as I thought I was. They, they teach you right off the bat that excuses don't mean anything. We don't want to hear your excuses. We don't care why you're late. We don't care why you, you didn't make your time. And, it can, you know, that really translates over into business because you can have all the excuses in the world mm-hmm. for why your product, business, or your service isn't doing good. But at the end of the day, if you're not making money, then, you know, you're going to be out of business really soon. That was definitely valuable. The whole leadership thing was very valuable. We lead at every level. As special operators, we go into some of the most violent cities in the world, you know, sometimes with, you know, four guys, sometimes ten guys. And when you're doing that, you have to know that your leadership might get taken out, injured, or killed. And so you have to know how to lead, step up, and, you know, take care of business. And that's been hugely important in wow. Baltimore. You know, there's, there's a bunch of other things, and we could talk for hours on it, but those are just a few of the things that I've taken from the SEAL teams and applied to business. Well, first of all, we've been talking to Eli Crane, owner of Bottle Breacher. Eli, thanks for your service as a member of the U.S. Navy and the Navy SEAL, so we definitely thank you for that. Of course, here to talk to you today about your business, Bottle Breacher. Now, Bottle Breacher, that itself sounds exciting. Tell us about it. Absolutely. So I started this business. Um, out of my one-car garage in San Diego. I was honestly just trying to make something cool. Um, <laughs> when I realized I was onto something and that my buddies loved it, we uh, we were taking 50 caliber dummy ammunition and turning them into bottle openers. We did not come up with this idea. We just made this idea way better, and we, you know, applied a, sol- a solid branding to it. You know, Breacher, I wanted the brand to be something that stood out and something that, you know, people could get behind and, you know, a breacher in the SEAL teams is an operator whose job is to get us into whatever target we're hitting, hmm. whether he does it explosively or mechanically. And so, you know, I knew you had to get into that bottle of such somehow, so why not breach it? So <laughs> bottle breacher got a nice got a nice ring to it and uh, you know, we've found that people, you know, have really gotten behind our made in the USA, you know, better known brand. That's right. Now a lot of the most of the product is actually made by US veterans and US citizens, right? Yeah, so we have um just to be completely upfront, we're, you know, we're not, our, our business isn't completely operated by veterans. We hire as many as, as many as we can. Gotcha. Right now we have set, we have seven working for us. And so, um, you know, we're pretty proud of that fact. And all of our products are made right here in the USA, and we're extremely proud of that. That's pretty awesome. In fact, uh, I know that went over well when you were on ABC's Shark Tank, right? And uh, you were on their pitching capital. A lot of people think that show is just about a game show. But in essence, you were raising home but bid. I didn't really go, even though money is great, it can infuse your business. What I really wanted was I wanted tactical partners, partners that could get me in the doors that would take me four to five years to get into myself. Hmm. And you know, guys that could help guide and mentor us along the way. And that's what I was really seeking. Along with it, you get, obviously, we got $150,000, 75 from Mark Cuban, 75 from Kevin O'Leary. But the other thing that you get is the exposure of the Shark Tank. And, you know, that show is rerun constantly right. in the United States, all over the world. And every time it gets rerun, you know, 
we get a, we see a spike in sales. So it's it's been amazing. That's pretty awesome. We've we've been talking. We're still talking to Eli Crane of Bottle Breacher, and I know we're talking about your experience on the Shark Tank. Millions of dollars of sales immediately after show after the show. So not only did you raise capital, but there's how how many millions of dollars in just marketing that you get for your business, whether you get a deal or not. You know, I don't know what the actual number is. I've heard it. That type of exposure would cost you millions of dollars. Hmm. So one of the things that I went into the Shark Tank and one of my mantras was is that 70% of something is worth more than 100% of nothing. Okay. I would have given up 30% of my business, you know, for what I got. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners make is that they don't realize the value of taking on a tactical oh. partner who also can who also can infuse income and capital into your business. You know, they want to keep control over everything, you know, and they want a hundred they want to be hundred percent owner and that's great and it's fine, but a lot of the times hmm. they're never able to take their business to the next level because of it and that's why I say they own a hundred percent of nothing. <laughs> and that's a good thing to say. I remember hearing even Kevin O'Leary say that, you know, he had a problem with his original company that he sold to Mattel and he brought in another guy to solve that problem and he gave that guy equity and as a result, what, four Four billion dollars later, uh, they were a multi-billion dollar sale or something like that. So uh, absolutely. I, I, I definitely agree with that. So let's let's kind of switch gears just a little bit and w- preparing to get onto the show. Not necessarily applying, but what's going? What else is going through your head as far as preparing? Questions they might ask, things they may want to know, things that you need to still learn about your own business. What was going through your mind? You know, what was going through my mind is that we were only going to get one shot at this. And uh, I've had a lot of failures in my life. Most of them were because I didn't pr- properly prepare. Most of it was because I took kind of a lackadaisical, I'm going to do this kind of half ass mentality. And I knew that wasn't going to work on the Shark Tank. So, you know, we knew, you know, nothing's worse than watching the Shark Tank and watching entrepreneurs fumble through their pitch and then not being able to answer questions. So I definitely sought out as many advisors you know, it had solid reputations that had been there, done that, and had been successful in multiple businesses. And I just had them put me through the pressure cooker. You know, I'm on the Shark Tank seeking money. They knew that we knew working about. They knew that our sales were solid, you know, and they knew um, that we weren't going to run from adversity. And I think that's so important because when you make a, when you do a deal, when you make an investment, only half of that investment should be on the product or the service or the business itself. The other, sh- the other half of that investment and deal should be based on the warm and fuzzy you get on the people behind it. And that's what I wanted the Sharks to understand, that Jen and I have faced a lot of adversity. And when we faced it, we didn't run for the hills. You know, we fought strong. And we had to. After the Shark Tank, you know, we had a three-month back order. We had, you know, for sure a customer service problem because hmm. you know we did a mil- million dollars in sales in the first week oh. you know so you don't go from manufacturing your own product and making 130 units on a good day to <laughs> having to make f- 1500 to 2000 on the next day and not have any issues that just doesn't happen wow. and so you know we were thankfully as a company we were able to get through that we rallied around one another we thought outside the box we brought in new innovation and, you know, we solved the problem. And because of it, we, we're still in business today. Well said. Eli Crane, owner of the Bottle Breacher. Where can listeners pick it up? Go to BottleBreacher.com. Um, all, of our, our, all of our products are right there. They're all made in the USA. We support a lot of veteran nonprofits. You know, I couldn't be any happier to do what I do on a daily basis. Thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, we appreciate you. We appreciate your service. Eli Crane, owner of Bottle Breacher. Thanks for taking your time out on HomeBizz.com. Thank you. Connect. Capitalize. Go. Hi, I'm Eugene Rowe, host of the podcast for business. On behalf of our team, I'd like to say thanks. Every month, we're able to impact thousands of lives all over the globe with relevant, impactful, and insightful guests. Some of them have even been featured on national television shows like ABC's Shark Tank and CNBC's The Profit. Our mission is simple, to journey with you on your road to achievement. To do that, I'd like to invite you to partner with us in our Share All Promise. I promise to continually share for free without commercial interruption and unnecessary subscriptions. And I ask that you promise to share us with your friends. 
Hear something you like? Simply use the social share buttons at the bottom of the page to tell your network about the podcast for business. It's simple, easy, and only takes five seconds. That's it, partner. You've made the share all promise. All new radio for small business. It's Radio for Small Business. Your host, Eugene Rowe. Check us out on HomeBiz.com. Connect, capitalize, and go. And if you're planning on going on an adventure, you'll want to listen to this next guest, Andy Cochran, owner of Oru Kayak. Welcome to Radio for Small Business. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Andy, now, I'll tell you. I've been on water in water sports uh, maybe once. I was in a canoe. I know you guys do kayaks. you got to tell me, which one's easier, the canoe or the kayak? It really depends what you're doing, man. Canoes are good for one thing, and kayaks are good for another. Well, we were beginners, so... (laughs) Typically, you know, used for carrying more gear over longer distances. You can throw in multiple packs or a couple kids, a dog. Kayaks are generally quicker. They turn faster, better for rivers, and really... A lot better for oceans or surf. Depends what you're doing. Beginners, I, I've heard we should have definitely started with the kayak. I wish I had known about your business before then because it wasn't long before we were in the water. We maybe were in the the actual canoe for five minutes, but we were in the water for a little bit longer than that before we could climb out. So uh, I definitely tell you, how'd you get the motivation or the inspiration to really start your business? The inspiration from the business, not mine. So I, I lead marketing here. Our lead designer founded the business number of years ago we're talking eight or nine years ago and he is an architect by trade and he was doing architecture with a material called chloroplast which is uh basically a plastic cardboard so he's pretty familiar with this type of material he's also a pretty avid kayaker and he moved from northern minnesota uh, sorry northern california down to san francisco down to the bay area and in that move he moved into a small apartment and couldn't keep his kayak so he threw it in storage, and, you know, this is kind of something he didn't like. He, you know, would rather be out paddling every once in a while. Right. He read an article in the New Yorker about origami and had one of those kind of cliche aha moments where he, you know, started believing he could make a kayak out of out of this plastic that he used a lot doing origami folding technique. So, um, th- so the actual kayak actually folds and stores a lot better than, than anything else that's out there right now. Yeah, yeah, it's totally different. We don't really we don't have a competitor on the market. Our boat folds to one sheet of plastic. Uh, there's three different models. Um, either you can get them in either 12 or 16 feet long, and it folds down into a case that you can check on a plane. You can carry on your back. You know, fit, fit fit in the trunk of your car. So it folds down pretty small. Something that you know, makes it a lot more portable. Awesome. We're talking to Andy Cochran with Oru Kayak. Now, Andy, I know eventually uh, it was time to maybe raise on, raise some capital and build some funds. Are you, can you talk to us a little bit about how the company maybe brought on some investors or at least pitched a few investors? So we have raised funds actually in a number of ways now. So we uh, have dabbled in crowdfunding. We launched initially in 2012 in the fall uh, with a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. That was Roughly three, give or take, years of development before that. So there's, you know, there's substantial resources, both human and financial, that go in before that of um, developing this boat. Probably 25 prototypes worth of, you know, testing and refining and iterating. We launched on on Kickstarter in 2012. At that time, we were the largest outdoor Kickstarter ever, roughly two thirds of a million. Um, Use that money to set up a factory, to bring on a dev team, to build out a website, to hire three or I guess pay the three founders. Um, at least enough to get by while the company started to grow. Mm-hmm. Since then, we've gone through a couple rounds, small and mostly with, with angels, friends and family, but still have used that money each time for very specific needs. So it's not just like, you know, this spring we're going to go out and raise money to, to grow. It's like we need a certain a certain machine I gotcha. or, you know, a certain mold for injection molding in the factory, you know, or we're going after a distribution center in Europe. Let's raise, you know, whatever it is, 400K for that. Right. Do you always have very specific criteria? Because investors don't like just giving money for the sake of giving you money. They want to know where their cash is going, right? Right, exactly. I mean, investors, you know, it's a better way, I think, to reframe investment is just an accelerator. Like, the smartest thing you can say to, a, to an investor and, and make sure it's true is, is that you're going to get there regardless of their support or not. It's just their money is going to get you there faster. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you think if you reframe it like that as an accelerator, you know any of those things would have happened 
or you know still in the future will happen for Oru. We just take on that money, uh, make it happen, earn money from it, and pay it back. Gotcha. Uh, it's, is a better way to think about it. Gotcha. Andy Cochran of Oru Kayak is on radio for small business right now. Homebabiz.com. Connect, capitalize, go. Andy, you mentioned raising funds from friends and family. And by now you've got a little bit of experience. What are some tips that you can give other entrepreneurs who may be thinking about asking Uncle Ted for a few thousand dollars? It's a great question. So like I mentioned to you a bit ago, we've done it through crowdfunding and through angels. And we've also been on, actually appeared on Shark Tank. That's uh, right, that's right, yes. So we've danced that dance too. The advice I'd give for even asking is to really do homework and and see if you need to ask for it. You know, people are really intrigued by raising money, and here in the Bay we see it a lot. And one of kind of the, the most salient, the most important piece of advice I've gotten in my career is do not take investment if you do not, if you don't need it. Hmm. Um, I think that, you know, it's um, essentially it's giving up control of your company, and and not in a you know selfish you need everything type of way, but right. just in having autonomy to make business decisions rapidly without a large board, without investors can dictate some of that is really helpful. And you know that's a piece of advice I I got and heeded, and it's been uh, important for for me and us is is to. So, when we didn't need it, don't take it. So, Andy, you know uh, most entrepreneurs, they'll say, of course I need money right now. We want a widget or something like that. How do you right. talk them down off the ledge to help them be real with themselves about whether or not they need to go raise capital? Uh, well, I would explain to them that if, if their product cannot isn't profitable by itself, uh, then taking money now is only going to put them in a the larger problem of uh, hmm. You know how to how they work themselves out of that. So <laughs> it's, it's it's only going to make you struggle more. Uh, you know you'll be paying that back and trying to stay in the black at the same time. Uh, you know which kind of complicates or almost you know, doubles that problem. So we I mean we see most of you know people around us. It, it's almost the fastest way to sink yourself is to take on you know a, a large investment that you can't pay back. Um, and you know it seems so intriguing because it's cash up front and. You can make moves right now, uh, you know, and you're the new cool kid on the block that raised, you know, such and such amount. Um, but eventually you got to pay the piper, money. right? <laughs> right. So, I, you know, I, I would, my methodology is, is uh, to do small prototyping all the time. So if people are, you know, have really validated their products, you know, that they can execute it, that the market really demands it, um, and they've done, you know, sufficient testing in that sense through real pilots. You know, getting it in people's hands, selling it in you know small exclusive runs, uh, and they know the demands there. They know they can manufacture it or they can build it if it's software. Um, then yeah, I mean, then you can you can look at yourself, you know, honestly in the eye and say, cool, I'll take investment, I'll accelerate this business to the next step. Okay. Um, but until you've done that due diligence, hmm. um, it seems a little risky to me. Stay away from it, and, right? And not <laughs> and not risky in a good way. You know, there's good risk. Uh, in business decisions and then there's just dumb risk <laughs> I like the way you said it Andy Cochran owner of Oru Kayak uh, why don't, what's the website give the listeners the website uh, the website is orukayak.com that's O-R-U and kayak which is spelled K-A-Y-A-K dot com Andy Cochran Oru Kayak thanks for taking your time out here on homebabiz.com connect capitalize go Hi, I'm Eugene Rowe, host of the podcast for business. On behalf of our team, I'd like to say thanks. Every month, we're able to impact thousands of lives all over the globe with relevant, impactful, and insightful guests. Some of them have even been featured on national television shows like ABC's Shark Tank and CNBC's The Profit. Our mission is simple, to journey with you on your road to achievement. To do that, I'd like to invite you to partner with us in our share all promise. I promise to continually share for free without commercial interruption and unnecessary subscriptions. And I ask that you promise to share us with your friends. Here's something you like. Simply use the social share buttons at the bottom of the page to tell your network about the podcast for business. It's simple, easy, and only takes five seconds. That's it, partner. You've made the share all promise. 
all-new Radio for Small Business. It's Radio for Small Business on HomeBiz.com. My next guest is probably the smartest one I've ever talked to, okay? Mark Melney with Melney Connectors. I've got to tell you right now, welcome to the show, and you're definitely smarter than me, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to bet on that, but go ahead. <laughs> I would bet on it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Melney Connectors and the great things that you all do. We are in... in the essence of an invention company. I started this uh, this company about five six years ago. I my invention. I I, uh, I had this invention in two thousand seven two thousand eight. Um, patented it and received hmm. our patent in thirteen months. So we had an issued patent, which was probably one of the fastest patents you know ever. Wow. <laughs> it was Is that unusual incredible. to get a patent that quick? No 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 not at all. Matter of fact, uh, in two thousand ten. We went to Boise, uh, Idaho, and we we participated in a what they call the Tech Launch Seven. It was the uh, Entrepreneur of the Year slash Inventor of the Year, and we won that contest. When we when we did, I, I mean, it, it opened up the the door for uh, you know a lot of things. Looking at our company just as as an invention company, wow. and, and so the 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 nature of my invention is it's really disruptive. It's uh, the electrical industry has been uh, going on for 60, 70 years doing the same type of, of connections hmm. between their cables and their wires. And you know what that is. Uh, this is, would be a, a crimp. And you saw it on the show. It was, it's, a, it's a regular piece of pipe that you take a very heavy pair of pliers, you squeeze it down, that pipe squeezes down on top of the conductors, and that, that gives you your, your connection really? between you know, two cables. Yeah, that's, that's the standard crimp. And then in the industry, they take this, this crimp, which is a piece of metal. Again, it looks kind of like a metal pipe. And then they wrap it with tape, uh, cambric tape or, or, or you know, the, the different types of tapes that they have, electrical tape, and to make it uh, moisture-proof or environmentally uh, <laughs> you know, insulated from the uh, you know from from the ground etc wow. so what my invention does is it it as the uh, two conductors come into each other inside of my uh, connector then there's a, a spiral activity inside there that that closes down on top of the uh, conductor similar to like fire uh, chinese finger trap which makes a really excellent contact between the whole surface area of the conductor and the connector, and then uh, radially tightens down on top of it, or, or radial and linear uh, tightening for our, our latest devices. And then once those are tightened down on there, uh, you, you have a, a hell of a connector. Sorry for that, but that's the way it is. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> so we're talking to Mark Melney with Melney Connectors, a wonderful invention company. You've seen him on ABC Shark Tank. Mark, you mentioned that the current electric industry, basically they're using a piece of metal and some tape. I mean, I, if I'd known this, I could be rich because half the appliances in my house used to be like that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so now your your connectors, your inventions are revolutionizing the electrical industry. Industry. And, and like you said, it's offering a faster, safer, more cost-effective way uh, to transfer power. Now, as a as a consumer, what does that mean to me on the consumer side? We are going to, right now. We're concentrating on our commercial activities. You know, the, the, it, it's we feel that the best way to enter this marketplace is through the the, the, the commercial area because the the people that are going to be using it, the electricians, the linemen. These are the guys that really know their products. When it gets into their hands and you start, it's going to be kind of the, the trickle-down effect where the, the professionals are saying, okay, this is the right way to go, and then it's going to go towards the, the residential and the home market. Um, the very first device, just, just to give you an idea of the simplicity uh, for making the connector with the Melody connector as opposed to a, uh, a standard 4 aught what I described before, the 4 aught crimp that you have to use these huge, you know, crimpers or whatever to do. Mm. My wife, uh, Mary, she made the very first uh, 4 aught connection with a Melody uh, connector using a pair of pliers, you know, tightening it down and uh, and then tightening down the uh, the end caps, which 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 allow the uh, the insulator to be a part of the connector, so that it literally uh, is, has a positive. A rejection of moisture and environment and stuff like that. So that gives you an idea how it, it will start going towards the residential. So as use. as it gets picked up more commercially, eventually I as a consumer will be able to see some benefit. Well, I won't see it probably, but I'll get the benefit of it, right? 
you will be able to, to, to see it at your different outlets like, you know, the typical do-it-yourself outlets like Lowe's and Home Depot and True Value. Uh, this is going to be our next area that, that we're going to be releasing this into. Now, some of our products, you, you've seen the ones that were on the show, and uh, we have a vast array of products that go all the way from a battery a, a terminal connector that would go on top of your, uh, your automotive or, or truck or bus battery to start the vehicle all the way down to a Romex type connector uh, that would be used in, inside the home. Uh, and you, it, I don't know uh, what you've what you've done electrically, but you know what a wire nut is. Uh, by ideal is is a, they're they're the, the small nuts that when you put up a fan inside your your house or you put in a light fixture, those little little nuts that you take the wires, you stick them inside and you twist them down. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's a wire. It, it, it's known as a wire nut. That's a trademark by ideal, uh, and and it's it, it it's uh, you know there, there's there's a trillion of those little guys sold around the world every year, hmm. and and that's a marketplace that to me that's that's really where uh, I we we need to be there. Uh, that's one of my inventions in my very first patent was gotcha. a I call it the zap nut, which is zero application pressure, but it literally slides over the top of the conductors, let's say three or four conductors that you would be tightened together just like you would in a light fixture, and then you would twist about a quarter turn to a half turn twist on my zap nut, and then it, 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 it collapses the, uh, the the internal workings of, of the insert, and then boom, it, it goes around the conductors, and it, it has a higher pull rate than a standard wire nut. Now, you mentioned that, uh, obviously, that you want the commercial side on. W- with that, the professionals are going to be vouching for you, and when you raised capital, right, you took a, a professional 30-year veteran lineman on to the ABC Shark Tank. Tell us about the process, not necessarily yet of the show, but some of the things that you prepared for to prepare for the questions that you would have to answer. I'll tell you, that's the best part. It is really the best part. I mean, when Shark Tank contacted, first of all, the the odd part about this this whole thing was that we got contacted by Shark Tank. Wow. It wasn't the, yeah. It, we were, uh, originally they told us there was 42,000 applicants for season six. Um, in Boise, uh, I was invited to introduce uh, Robert Hershevik, uh to the Boise Business uh, Convention. So I got to spend actual, you know, some private time with with Hershevik. And, and wow, what a cool guy! He was the original shark that I was, you know, I wanted to 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 partner with because hmm. I, I just, I, you know, he's kind of a fun kind of a guy. He seems like that on the and, show, yeah. Yeah, he does. And in, in real life, he he is. He's very. Po- I've read his book, and it was it was probably one of the best uh, books moving forward for for business people to look at it it, it has more of a serendipity type of uh, you know, hard work but but you know letting you know letting your 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 bliss kind of lead you towards you know the end but anyway i, I sat and talked with him and he explained some of the insides of the show that was outstanding uh, it wasn't 42,000 it was 120,000 applicants mg <laughs> when i know they added he he was explaining that that what what we were looking at the the was the the actual people that were you know sending in the emails and sending in all these uh, applications were about 42,000 the 120,000 came from the different cities these guys the producers go out to chicago to la to you know new york okay. whatever and they have these casting calls where, where, where people will come in and show their inventions so hershevik was explaining to us the show has has just incredibly gone uh, you know it's all, a they, wonderful they, show they, yeah it is Oh yeah, they've gone into twenty English-speaking countries now. So, wow. so we get calls literally last week. We got four uh, emails from large distributors in India. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, these people want to sell our product, and 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 we've gotten Brunei, we've gotten uh, Australia, New Zealand, all these English-speaking countries that, that see my product, they want to sell it. So, the show has been outstanding. Now, when they first called us. And I said, that's great. I wanted to bring, you know, four guys with me. Uh, the one representative from the Northwest Lyman's College, which is, uh, uh, they produce uh, a lot of your power linemen across the country, and Canada, et cetera. Hmm. And then also uh, Byron Dunn, who was uh, the, that lineman that was on the show. Right. 30-year man who's put over, you know, uh, he's figured between five and 10,000 of these crimps in his 30-year period, which is not a bad way to think about it. Right. Probably more like three to 5,000. But anyway, <laughs> this guy is amazing. He's a maverick. So he, when he saw my product, uh, he, at first, I went on to his, his blog and I said, hey, I've got a new product. 
his secretary sent back said, look, you cannot advertise your product on our blog. And then I said, well, it's, this is more of a, you know, here's a safety item. And here's something I just want to get people's opinion on it. So then I said, let me talk to the boss. I talked to, to Byron. And, uh, you know, at first he was just, okay, send me one. Let me take a look at it. Gotcha. Yeah. I sent him one. I uh, did the things. And then, you know, after he looked at it and experimented, boom, he wants to invest in the product. And, and you know, he, he was so excited about it. He still is. I mean, he's our <laughs> number one fan. And he's brought in all the alignment into that. So that right there, that as an investment goes, it was when he saw it and he's been around it for a long time, boom, he dropped uh, 50 grand into the, uh, you know, invention That says a lot from somebody with that type of experience in the industry. And that You're brought you a, right. lot of cat- a lot of credibility on the show, didn't it? Well, that's it. And that the, the producers, here's the part that, that people, that, that was amazing to us, but it, it, it worked out very, you know, it worked out great. The producer, Mark Burnett's office called and said, no, you can't bring Byron. You can only go just the two of you, and that's what that's what your finances are for. I said to the the producer, I said, "Look, I'll pay for Byron to go. Let me let let's take him. He's a you know, it's really important." And then she said, "No, you know, you can't do that." So then I said, "Okay, I have to renege. I have got to you know, I we're not going to be able to make the show." Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I know. And at this point, we're we're down to the very. I mean, they've already got our flights and all this other stuff, and that's when when they told us that this bad news about Byron. She said, that's never happened. We don't, that you, you don't get to this stage and then say you're not coming. And Especially said, for the Shark Tank, right? They're like, hey, it's what's going on? Straight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, this is, they, they'd already sent us out papers to our attorney stating that if we make the show, that we're that we would have on on media digital advertising of the approximation of about 1.6 million dollars worth of of media advertising. Hmm. So it's like saying no to that. Hmm. Okay, and, and and at that point I just and I said no to her and I told her this is it. So she said to me, she said, "Why is he so important?" I said, "Look, let's say that you, a producer of a you know a reality television show, a great show, and me, a, a you know a half." I hate to say it, but a half-assed piano player <laughs> who, who who owns a computer company, and, and, you know, we're sitting there trying to tell the world's greatest VCs at this point about a product, an electrical product, that oh. neither one of us are an electrician. <laughs> and then I have Byron Dunn, who has been 30 years in the industry, owns his own magazine that, that, that caters to the Power Lineman. As a matter of fact, it's called Power Lineman Magazine. And this guy, with the minute he saw it and started working with it, invest money in it. Who do you want? If, if you and I were trying to sell this invention, ma'am, to these people, who, who wouldn't would you want sense? this guy to be on the show? Right. And then she said to me, okay, he's on, wow. just like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then looking back at it, I mean, I've got uh, with the first – when we first hit, uh, first 48 hours, we had 72,000 emails that came in. <sighs> we had 8.2 million people watch the show, according to the stats. And, it, it, yeah, it was, we were in the April season, so it's, it's while, you know, it kind of builds up as it goes along, you know. So, anyway, after getting all those hits and stuff, it was unanimous that Byron Dunn, sold the whole thing. Wow, wow. I mean, as far as I was concerned, they gave, I mean, when we were sitting there, and, and you know, I, I really like the, the sharks. I like all of them. I, Mr. Wonderful's a little bit weird, but <laughs> Barbara <laughs> Cochran, she's sitting there, and she looked at us, and she said, Byron, I give you an A+. Plus. You know, I, I kind of think the two of them had a thing going on there, but anyway, <laughs> she looked over at Armand, my partner, and she says to him, she says, Armand, I give you a C. And Armand just kind of says, what? And then she looked at me, and she says, Mark? And she shook her head, and I said, well, come on, give me something, you know? <laughs> so it was it was an amazing uh, thing. And, and it, it, the way it worked out with Byron there, he was able to answer technically any question these guys would have. That and, helped out a huge bit, didn't it? That helped out. Yes, it did, because we were out there for almost two hours. Wait a yeah, minute. It wasn't just a few minutes that, that I saw you guys on the segment? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm two glad hours. You had him with and, you. And, and it was it was it was kind of grueling, especially for me because you know they're trying to figure out our backgrounds and and I, the same thing I said to the producer. What you know, I I don't have a background in elect, electronics. I mean, you know, wow. <laughs> just the way it goes. <laughs> so hey, Mark, we've been talking to Mark Melney, owner inventor of Melney Connection Connections, Melney Connectors. Mark, uh, what's your what's your website so that more people can find out about you? Uh, it is www.melneyconnectors.com, or easier to me is melney.org. Melney.org. Mark Melney, 
Thank you for taking your time out on homebabiz.com. Thank you very much for the, for reaching out and talking to us. Connect. Capitalize. Go. Hi, I'm Eugene Rowe, host of the podcast for business. On behalf of our team, I'd like to say thanks. Every month, we're able to impact thousands of lives all over the globe with relevant, impactful, and insightful guests. Some of them have even been featured on national television shows like ABC's Shark Tank and CNBC's The Profit. Our mission is simple, to journey with you on your road to achievement. To do that, I'd like to invite you to partner with us in our share all promise. I promise to continually share for free without commercial interruption and unnecessary subscriptions. And I ask that you promise to share us with your friends. Here's something you like. Simply use the social share buttons at the bottom of the page to tell your network about the podcast for business. It's simple, easy, and only takes five seconds. That's it, partner. You've made the share all promise.